and that family practice referred them to a specialty doctor, say a podiatrist, and the podiatrist is having them fill out a form specifically for his practice. Now, when they go back into the system um, and they have to fill out this new form, they would only have to fill out the specialty part because our system will go ahead and pull over all of their demographics, all of their allergies, medicine, and, and all of that. Um, and so the patient, instead of spending 15 minutes to fill out a form, it cuts down to perhaps less than five. So once they go ahead and log in uh, to this registration, what you're seeing here right now is within every patient's PHR, we allow for them to have multiple profiles. So say I can have a profile for myself, I can have one for my parents um, or my spouse. And so this is great um, when you, you know, you have someone who's a caretaker, um, they can take care of, you know, all of their family's needs. So you select the profile that you need to um, complete this registration with. And as you can see here, um, all the information is um, already pre-populated and filled into all the, um, all the individual fields. Now, whether this is a new registration or one that's being pulled from the PHR, all the registrations are pretty much going to look like this throughout. On the first page, um, the patients have the ability to choose to fill this form in either English or Spanish, but once the form is submitted, it's reverted completely back into English for your staff members. So on the first page here, we ask for the patient's demographics. Um, once they complete this first form, and just to take a quick step back, if this was a brand new registration, um, whenever patients complete the demographics on the first page, we automatically um, create a PHR for them. So this is helpful in the instance that, let's say, midway through doing this registration, a patient loses internet, get, gets kicked off, or they leave their computer to do some other activity and come back and we log them out. What they will essentially do from there is basically just go ahead and go into their email where we assign them, um, we basically create them an account. We have a link for them to set their password. And so once they go into their PHR, they can continue this registration from where they left off. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Um, our form is intuitive, so um, it means Throughout, if the patient answers any questions that require additional information, we can go ahead and populate additional fields for them to complete. Otherwise, they can just move forward. Okay, here we, um, we do ask for the patient's primary insurance. We also allow for them to choose a private pay. If they do have primary insurance, we, um, in addition, ask them for secondary insurance as well. As I'm going through this registration form, which is really just a typical new patient form, it's not uh, specific to any specialty. If there are certain areas that you, um, any of you would like to see a little bit more of, um, feel free to ask me to go back or forward, whichever works for you. Here's the secondary insurance piece. Um, this is essentially where the patient's going to be signing off on their financial responsibility. And this electronic signature is actually legally binding because we date stamp it, time stamp it, IP address stamp it, and assign it a QR code. Um, here's a emergency contact area. Below here we ask for the patient's preferred pharmacy information. Now based on the zip code that they provided in their demographics, we do geolocate the pharmacies that are within their area that they can go ahead and choose from. And this is going to be helpful um, later on once they become a patient uh, because we do have a prescription um, refill request uh, feature. Uh, the, the practice will already know, you know what pharmacy this patient goes to. The health information, um, the reason for this particular checkup, if they're coming in for a specific problem, they can indicate the time um, and the date that they've noticed this problem. If they don't know, they can also use the scale below here to kind of gauge that. Um, immunizations here, you can see that there's a list that's already populated. Again, this is pulled from the PHR. If none of these pertain to the patient at that time, they can go ahead and delete. Um, but they can always choose from a menu and add it here in specific immunizations. But moving forward, um, you'll see that functionalities with allergies and recent hospitalizations and our surgeries as well. So here's what the allergies. Um, if a patient answers no to any of these mandatory pieces, we do ask for them to confirm to ensure that they are filling out this form to the best of their abilities. Again, if none of these pertain to them, they can go ahead and delete, as well as add new 
um, conditions. For allergies, we do ask, you know, for them to select the type of reaction as well as the severity level. Can you add that? Here, any medications that the, current, the patient is currently on, um, the dose that you're taking, the route, um, and how often they're taking this medication. Any recent hospitalizations in our surgeries. Family history section. social history section and you can notice that um, even though they're the form might seem a little a little long again this is fully customizable as well as um, the practice and our doctor can indicate which fields are mandatory for that specific practice here we ask for the patient's um, complete review of systems below here we ask if the patient is currently experiencing any pain if they indicate that they are we move them forward to an interactive body chart where they can use their mouse to hover over areas of their body that is currently giving them some trouble select a specific area and from here they can select the pain level the quality of the pain its onset the timing when it feels better or worse and they can add up to as many sections as needed and again, um, these are pulled from the PHR, so that specific time it doesn't apply to them anymore, they can go ahead and delete the specific section. Um, because this is a female profile, we ask for a gynecological review. However, if this was a male profile, we wouldn't be asking such questions. Okay, moving forward, we'll ask for the patient's weight as well as height. And then we do ask if the patient has any questions or comments they want to um, have the provider. And from this point on, the patient's basically signing off on all of their HIPAA and privacy notices. And once again, all of these electronic signatures are legally binding. Once the patient does send the registration and submit it over to the practice, um, they lay on this page here where they have the option of downloading and viewing their registration in a PDF. They can log into their patient portal. They can also create a map with directions from their place of residence to the healthcare provider's um, location. The reminders that you see here that are grayed out are basically the reminders that this particular practice has set on default for every one of their patients. Um, now this patient can choose to keep or delete this reminder, as well as they can add reminders for themselves based on their own pr um, preference. Once this uh, registration has been submitted, a staff member is going to receive an external notification letting them know that, uh, you know, patient has sent a registration, please log into your system and view this registration. Give me one second. Okay. And you can see here I just got a notification that <laughs> registration has been submitted. So when the staff member logs into their system, they'll see that registration under recent activities as well as they can see it under the patient registration tabs under new here. So once they view it, the registration moves over to the PDF history and from here they can actually view this in different formats um, including HTML. They can export this as CCR, CCD, and HL7 if needed. The insurance column that you see here um, basically will let